Hello, my name is M. Cohen, and I'm the missing Cohen sibling. Today, I will be talking about two scenes from the film which I had most input in, which deals with our character Jer Jerry Lundegaard. I will be talking about not only how the two frames are similar in the set design, but I'll also be talking about Jerry's transitional journey from feeling no emotion to being filled with worry and anxiety. This will take span from the beginning of the film to the end of the film, where we have two shots that almost mimic each other. And it's our character Jerry Lundegaard holding groceries. And this scene is from Jerry, who is inside the bathroom. And that clip comes from the first scene analysis of Jerry's entrance into the home. But now I'm going to talk about the two parallels between the two shots, which we'll be showing right now. I have two pictures. On the left side, Jerry's holding groceries in the day, the, di the day Jean's kidnapped, and on the left side, Jerry's entering home at night after witnessing the murder of his father-in-law. I will be marking up this, the pictures to show how these two scenes are similar in setting. Alright, on the first scene we have this white wall separating Jerry's entrance from the living room. Okay, let me give a minute. Oh, right here, yeah, okay, good. This white wall, this white line that shows living room and then Jerry. Just mark this up. This giant portion here, which is, which should be copied in the next scene. Right there, this giant white line that divides Jerry. His family room, which is ironic because most of his family is gone because of him. And next about their stances, which I think talks a lot about their personality. So at the beginning of the film, Jerry is very confident, he stands up tall, and he does not crouch over. But in the second scene, Jerry is more hunched over, trying not to be seen, with his feet turned inwards. And then these plays into his emotions during the scene, because he's trying not to alarm his son, or Ask him, make his son ask him where he's been. So I will not, I will get on with it, don't worry. I just want to talk about the main point of my scene now is to talk about this transition Jerry seems to have with emotions. Because Jerry first shows most of his emotions more in the second scene, the first scene, because, well, you see more, you have to wait and see until I finish actually. But yeah, he had more of an emotional strain on himself, like more of his hunched back indicates this distress he's underneath and i will go into this more as the video continues so i hope you enjoy and relax and enjoy the hidden commentary from the missing cohen brother now i'll play my first scene that takes part at the beginning of the film hon got the groceries Yeah, Wade, I, it's Jerry, I... All right, I hear I'm back. So I want to talk about this one instance where he says, hun, it struck me as very odd because he knows that his wife's gonna be kidnapped. So let me play the clip for you one more time so you see what I mean. Hun? Got the groceries. So when Jerry enters the house, the first thing he does is um, stomp off his shoes, take off the snow off, says hun, and he mentions that he got the groceries. So in the beginning of the film, Jerry enters the house with groceries and to greet his wife who's already at home with her father. He has his routine about telling her about his day. But in this instance, Jerry's already made the plan to have his wife kidnapped and 
what struck me is odd that he still plays with his routine where he's, he expects his wife to be there even though he already made plans for her not to be there anymore. I think that Jerry's maybe a bit lonely seeking for companionship and he took his wife for granted who is always there for him. So now we see that Jerry never like, really thinks this plan through an indication of that but he shows no remorse right now or no surprise that she did not answer because in the next clip you'll see what happens when he investigates the house. So So in the bathroom, we see on the floor that the, the robbers left the crowbar, the window screens off, the windows open, and this will foreshadow Jerry's end in the movie when he tries to escape from the window, from the police, and he fails. So we thought we should um, put the like as a little clue for the audience members how Jerry's fate's going to end. But with the struggle, we see that Jerry now finds out that Jean was probably hurt in the process of the kidnapping. And then from the next shot, I'm going to show like this Jerry's expression to this violent scene. So what really struck me was Jerry's two faces he makes. His first devoid expression, and the second one is like more curiosity, like gaze towards upwards toward the missing shower curtain. In this next shot, you'll see the empty shower rod and the curtain on the ground, which transitions to Jerry talking to his father-in-law about Jean's kidnapping, but he practices it, practices it to seem more surprised, like he had no involvement in it. But the main point I want to get across the scene is Jerry's emotion. He's calm, shows no nervousness. It seems to be all going according to plan, but his emotions are, and st and his structure is going to change in the next scene, which shows what happens after the murder of his father-in-law. Yeah. Stan Grossman called. Yeah, okay. Twice. Oh, okay. Is is everything okay? Yeah. Are you calling Stan? Well, I'm I'm going to bed now. Alright, now I want to analyze the beginning scene where Jerry comes home, but he's more crouched than the, than the first thing that we saw. He does not wipe his boots off, does not greet his son, he goes straight to his chair, and he wipes off his sweaty brow. And I'm going to play this clip for you one more time so you can see what I mean, because he's clearly in a state of shock and panicking. Alright, so we saw the scene one more time, and we see Jerry is definitely becoming more anxious because now he witnessed a murder and his plan is starting to fall apart. And like this only one shot shows way more emotion that he's felt since the first scene we saw him when he witnessed the violent scene of his wife's kidnapping. And we see Jerry starting to crack under pressure which is in contrast to the first scene, even similar in composition, is different in emotion for Jerry. Now we'll see the next scene. Dan? Yeah? Stan Grossman called. Yeah, okay. Twice. Oh, okay. Is, is everything okay? Yeah. Are you calling Stan? Well, I'm, I'm going to bed now. So we now we see a conversation between him and his son, but he's not very talkative. He's only saying one one syllable words, like yeah. And it seems like Jerry does not want to talk to anyone right now. And he's trying not to give way too much emotion because if he speaks too much, 
who knows what he's gonna say so right now he's saying yeah okay and he's only saying like very non-descriptive responses to his son who's worried about him because he just lost his mother and he's keeps repeating okay and yeah like it's everything is okay but clearly with his tone we know that he's not okay so jerry reveals some endless anxiety and worry which i said before was not shown in the previous scene so these two scenes are interconnected not only by the same set the same almost same camera angle showing the lamp and the doorway but it's also showing jerry's transition of emotion his first initial response to his wife kidnapping barely any emotion but now that he's under pressure and murders involved he's only talking in one syllable words no longer follows a routine and he's becoming more and more anxious with sweating and you see these physical response so i hope that you enjoyed my commentary and you watch fargo and again see what you can find